everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video, I'm working on some characters from the 1987 vampire movie, The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys is a Gen Xers classic starring Jason Patrick, Kiefer Sutherland, Corey Haim, and Jamie Gertz. In the movie, Kiefer Sutherland is David. He's the leader of a vampire gang of missing boys, hence The Lost Boys. And Jason Patrick, who plays Michael, is sort of being recruited into the gang. Jamie Gertz plays Star, and while she's Michael's love interest in the movie, she's bound to David as he's in the process of turning her into a full vampire. So since there's lots of great scenes with Star and David, I just decided on making the pair. I also just had to make David since I've been wanting to make him for several years now. He's such an iconic character. In this video I'm working on both dolls so I'll be sharing parts of the costume making, hair, and face up for both. So let's get started on Star's costume. I'm using some ribbon to make her a simple halter top. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, the full step-by-step -step of making this halter top is in real time on the October rewards and is located in the reward library. I love using this type of lace and eye, or eyelet trim to make tops because it already has the hem on the top and the bottom. It's very simple and it really matched the look I was going for with Star's top. I just added a little bit of lace to the bottom and stitched it up and added some buttons. So what I'm using for buttons are these little gemstones that are like for gem art and they worked great. So I was really excited to make her skirt because it's one of my favorite styles from the 80s where it has like the denim on top. I actually had a skirt very similar as a kid and as luck would have it I had some vintage 80s floral fabric that worked perfectly. For David's pants I used some stretchy black vinyl, used some paint for some aging techniques and then for his jacket I used some fleece and did some heat tool aging and paint as well. So I wouldn't be happy with the doll if I didn't address the iconic scene where David is giving Michael some maggots and worms in a takeout box. So I just drew out a template, put it together, painted on some symbols with a paint pen and added a little wire for the handle as well. So on to David's face up. I'm working using several different photos of Kiefer Sutherland trying to get the features as close as possible. This is more of a portrait doll than my usual style. I'm thinking one day I may redo this character as more in more of an exaggerated or surreal style like I usually like to do. If you couldn't tell already, I'm using one of the BTS dolls. I'm sorry, I'm not sure which one it was, but I just look at their faces and try to match up the features the best that I can with my reference photos. And the one I chose, the doll that I chose was pretty close, but I wish the nose was just a little bit closer to the upper lip and that the chin was a little bit longer. Um, but I worked with what I had. Holding the doll upside down helps me kind of match up the the features that I'm working on to the uh, reference photos that I'm looking at. And then if you turn it upside down, you just see it in another perspective. And it really helps kind of get those angles right. You may be able to tell that I did some shading up by his hairline and that's uh, where I was blending in where I created a receding hairline on this one and that's a video that I did for my patrons It's available in the reward library if you're a supporter over there So just a reminder for those who are looking to learn doll customizing I have some great options to help different types of learners in Etsy I have an instant download printable guide for beginner doll repainting It's just five dollars and it gives you a step-by-step -step how to create a doll repaint with photos along the way And by the way, thank you so much to all of those who have made that purchase. I hope it's been helpful to you. I also have different levels on Patreon available where I put out rewards monthly like a monthly tip, a monthly uh, close-up video where I'm working, and a monthly step-by-step -step learning tutorial or video. And also lastly on Skillshare I have full courses that are structured on into several 10-minute sessions. They're, uh, on, I have one on doll repainting for beginners and doll rerouting, and I believe the link in the description box below should give you at least a week, if not a month, of Skillshare for free with no obligation if you're a new, new subscriber. So just uh, all those links are in the description box below. So always address the ears when I'm working on a face up. I don't feel like it's complete if I don't do some shading in the ears. Okay. 
Okay, I was doing a little bit of shading in between the, or in the corners of the, inner corners of the eyes, and then worked it up into the eyebrow. And it, I'm just looking at the reference photo, and I wanted to, I chose a picture where he was sort of like evil looking. So I'm trying to get those eyebrows nice and low in the center. And then as usual, I erase them to shape them blending it out with a q-tip and then adding individual hairs with the watercolor pencil. So in the movie David has sort of a five o'clock shadow so to get that uh, looking right I first used some of this brown pan pastel and just did the shaping of where I wanted that sort of beard to go and then I added the the hairs afterwards. I did seal it after I add, added the pastel. It really helps get those individual hairs to pop, especially if you use some lighter colors like I was using some white to, to make highlights in the beard as well. These eyes were so tiny, it was so difficult to work on these. I'm used to making my dolls with big eyes, which kind of is like my style. And some of them I, I make smaller eyes, but this was like super tiny. And when you see me pull out my Caran d'Ache watercolor pencils, you can usually, that's a sign that I've been struggling a little bit. <laughs> adding some little tiny little highlights trying to work in these tiny spaces and not overdo it and then adding some white pan pastel for highlights as well and the dots in the eyes usually finish the are the a great finishing touch and bring it to life Moving on to Star's face up, again I chose a sculpt that looked as close to Jamie Gertz's face as possible. This is a Cleo Denial Monster High doll and I was, I typically for uh, character dolls I, or portrait dolls, I often will go to Ever After High dolls because they have like a nice canvas to work with, but Jamie Gertz has a longer face so I definitely wanted to use something that was just a little bit longer and less round. So I went with the Cleo Denial. So looking at reference photos with this one as well, I'm addressing the hairline, just trying to make it a little bit closer to what Jamie Gertz's hairline looks like. I'm adding some pan pastel in black, uh, blends well in with this dark brown color, and then added the individual hair color or individual hairs after I sealed it. So all the supplies that I use are in uh, Amazon storefront link in the description box below. You can make purchases through there and a, I get a small commission, but it's really just a, a place that I like to put my supplies so you can see what I use pretty easily. You can see how much they cost and and uh, it has like comments on how I use the products and, and things like that. So if you're interested in the supplies that I use, that's a great place to go to look. I'm wanting to make her upper lids a little bit heavier, so I'm adding a, a good bit of highlighting with some pan pastel and white pencil, and then reshaping out those darker areas. 
adding some blush with the uh, pan pastels and this is a just an eyeshadow brush works great for blush on dolls this is one of my favorite brushes it's just a round brush that got kind of tattered so I uh, cut it down to just sort of like a stencil brush if you follow me for a while you know that I love to use those little stencil brushes that I make out of a small round brush <laughs> giving her her cleft chin by just doing some shading and highlighting and then adding more highlights above her upper lip and philtrum. I'm doing her eyebrows and just dotting out where I want the arch and the, the beginning and end to be. And like I said, I usually just do them in pan pastel first, erase them to shape them, and then go back with the individual hairs using a watercolor pencil. Try not to use my pencil sharpener too much because it really wears down the pencil very quickly. So in between that, I'll use a nail file like I have here or just some sandpaper to sand it down to try to get a little bit of a point. Now onto the hair, I've rooted her with some, a couple of different types of hair. I used some uh, dark brown alpaca and uh, some dark brown, uh, almost black yarn. And I just added some curl spray to help the hold of the curls that I was creating with the metal chopstick and flat iron. And with David, I gave him a full reroute and a cut to create his Gloria Smollett. By the way, I do sell all the dolls that I make. Certain ones can sell pretty fast, so make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, and direct message me if you're interested. The two dolls that I'm making in this video, David and Star, have already sold, but I do have a couple of dolls in my shop and some more coming soon, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye!